Hey guys, this is Mark Rodriguez. You're watching a cool episode of WWE Aftershock, where we review all the cool WWE pay-per-views thanks to the WWE Network. And today we're going to talk about WWE Survivor Series 2015, and this is kind of old, especially by the time this video actually gets up, but um, if you guys haven't seen it yet, then yeah, spoilers. So anyways, I do want to thank you all because it's been a whole year now. We actually started this show, Aftershock, with the review of the Survivor Series 2014. And actually it was me and Chuck Rodriguez in the Heyday Diner. Here's a clip there. And he actually introduced me to the Heyday Diner, so that's pretty cool. And of course he used this restaurant for our Nurse and Nam series. But sadly, the restaurant is now closed down. It's out of business. It was like a... I guess one of those small personal restaurants, not like a big chain or nothing, so it's it's gone, and we don't really know what we're gonna do with Nurse Nam. It's probably over by now until I don't know. It's just I don't know. It just happened, you know. But yeah, the rest of the show was me and Paige talking about the cool wrestling matches too, and sometimes Johnny Rodriguez also got involved because he also got the WWE Network and all that. But um, yeah, it's been a fun year. Thank you guys for watching. I hope that we're still here for another year of wrestling fun and. Um, as for this one, though, Survivor Series, I do want to say that, um, yeah, it's, it's very disappointing, though. It was pretty disappointing, and there was some good matches, though, but the whole thing was disappointing mostly because it's the Survivor Series, while the actual event itself, the 5-on-5 five -five elimination tag match, was kind of like a, like a random afterthought. It was just tossed in there, I guess, because they kind of just had to, and it was like, it, I don't know, I'll tell you more about it and, you know, we, when we get to the final wrap up here but I do want to say two big things happened um the first thing was not planned um Seth Rollins of course heavyweight champion WWE love him or hate him he's the champion he was fighting one of those one of those like live events but not not something you would see on Raw or Smackdown it was one of those random live events where they fight and stuff and uh, I guess he jumped off the top rope so badly that when he landed he like he really busted his knee bad like like the knee really bent all the way back in a way that just shouldn't. So this is not something that he'll be back in a month. This is something that he's going to be out for a good seven or eight months. So they had to vacate the title, and they just randomly did, like, like I guess, scrambling. They randomly drew together this tournament, and um, all these guys to fight it out and all that stuff. The episodes of Raw and SmackDown, and now this pay-per-view, the, the main point basically is the two final matches, and the guys who win those will fight it out in the main event to see who the champion is. And on top of that, we also have Bray Wyatt and his family messing with The Undertaker and Kane. Now that Kane's back to being Demon Kane, this reunites The Undertaker and Demon Kane as the Brush of Destruction. But of course, that's all like a big thing though. So, so this Survivor Series is mostly all about the, the tournament and who's going to be the new champion but also about the Undertaker, you know, how bad is it? Oh, yeah, Undertaker's back with Kane and all that. But sadly, this really makes the Survivor Series, like I said, it's just like an afterthought. Like, I don't know, they should have did this for another pay-per-view or something. But I'll get that, I'll get like to that more in the final, like my final review here. So anyways, let's get this started. The first thing we had for the kickoff show was a Survivor Series 5 on 5 match. And it was, it was pretty random here. They had um, Neville with um, Titus O'Neil, which is interesting because Titus is very like alone and he was, um, they were teaming up with um, the Dudleys which is pretty cool, everyone loves the Dudleys but then of course the surprise return of Gold Dust, which is pretty awesome, we haven't seen Gold Dust like, like for almost half the year I think, it's been, it's been a long time since he's, he's um, last spawn and stuff so yeah, he's, he's back in there and they're fighting against the Cosmic Wasteland, which is Stardust, and the the Ascension, the Miz, and Bo Dallas. And I'm sorry, when I saw Bo Dallas come up, I was like, wow, you guys are really scraping the bottom of the barrel, aren't you, you know? But, um, yeah, it's a pretty interesting match. Um, Goldust did get the, I guess, element of surprise. Everybody was so shocked that he's back and everything. They took down one of the Ascension guys pretty easy. But other than that, he really didn't do too, too, too much. He, he was... I mean, I don't know, it just looked tired and, and slow and, and, you know, considering it was like the big thing, like Stardust was so worried about him or whatever, you know, Stardust whooped his ass pretty easy, they all whooped his ass pretty easy, and, um, yeah, in the end, Goldust and his team did win, but it was mostly because this team was helping out, because I think the, the Dudleys did their 3D on one of the guys, and they won, but, um, yeah, you know. But I guess the main thing we're taking from this is that Goldust is back in town, and now we're going to see what happens, because Stardust is still heavily against Neville, so maybe, maybe Goldust will team up with Neville to stop Goldust? I don't know, we'll have to see. 
But yeah, that was the kickoff show. And I do have to say, when this started though, with all the things I just told you before, I was saying, please guys, please, like, I hope they have a Survivor Series match during the actual pay-per-view. Don't just say, oh, it was in the kickoff, you know, but I'll get to that. So, now for the actual pay-per-view, the first match was one of the big semi-finals for the champion, which was Roman Reigns against Alberto Del Rio and all that. And I gotta say that for Roman Reigns, um, when the whole tournament thing started, since he was like the, the first contender to go against Rollins before this, this started, um, Triple H actually gave him the, the I guess, the, the offer that if you become like our next top guy with the authority, we'll make the match like a final match between you and whoever wins the tournament. So he doesn't have to go in the tournament. It'll just be him against whoever wins it. But, of course, Roman Reigns, you know, took that offer down, and he wants to find a tournament and earn it, like actually earn the right. So that was pretty cool. So the match was pretty cool, um, pretty cool, pretty intense. Um, Virtual to Rio was a very tough opponent. They both fought it out. They gave it, they gave it their all, and they were like, you know, doing all their moves. They were all like, you know, dodging the, the spears and dodging the Superman punch and dodging Alberto's off the rope attacks and stuff like that. But um, yeah, in the end, Roman Reigns still got him with the spear and he still won. But that was a pretty good match. And after Alberto De Rio himself, it's kind of weird with the whole Mex America thing, especially since the guy that's with him um, had is basically infamous for saying a lot of things against Mexicans before. So now that he's with Alberto De Rio, it doesn't really make sense. Uh, one thing I do suggest though is that. You take advantage of this to maybe do something with with uh, what's his name with um uh, what's his with Jack Swagger. Jack Swagger is like oh I even forgot him. he's so forgettable. But um, even he appeared in an episode of Raw questioning the guy as to why are you supporting um Alberto Del Rio after all the stuff you said about Mexicans in general. So they should really do that. They should probably do that. They should probably do like a, maybe like a feud between Alberto Del Rio and Jack Swagger just so that Jack Swagger can have something to do. And maybe that'll help him, you know, rise up the, the ladder, you know? So anyways, Roman Reigns won. That's pretty cool. Next match was the other semifinals, Dean Ambrose versus Kevin Owens. And of course, that was a pretty good match. Um, Dean Ambrose has his usual um, reckless, kind of I don't care what happens to me kind of fighting style. He, he takes a lot of damage and gets right back up. And he does super dangerous moves and still, like, I mean, he doesn't care if he gets hurt or whatever. And, of course, Kevin Owens is a big of a powerhouse. He has some fast moves despite his weight and all that. But, yeah, pretty good match. But what surprised me was it just it felt like it ended kind of abruptly, though, in my opinion. Um, Ambrose did get him with the Dirty Deeds, but I'm just surprised they didn't kick out. I'm surprised that, um, it, you know, that was it. Because usually, usually on these bigger, you know, high-profile pay-per-view matches, you know, People do their moves like two or three times, or they dodge them a lot, or whatever. You know, it takes it takes more than one um, AA or more than one choke slam to stop you and everything. So I'm surprised that with the dirty deeds, that was it. That Owens was out and he didn't kick out. I, I felt he could have kicked out. He could have gone for another ten minutes. I don't know. It was a pretty good match. But of course, this does mean that now it's going to be Roman Reigns against his good buddy Dean Ambrose for the title, for the main event. So that was a big thing. Will they still be friends during this match, you know? So, the next match was um, a Survivor Series match, but again, they just kind of slap it together, just random guys. It's like they just pick guys out of a hat or something. Uh, Ryback with uh, Lucha Dragons, because they actually fought, Ryback fought against um, Callisto early on in the tournament, and Callisto, despite everyone thinking that, you know, Ryback's the powerhouse, he actually won but Ryback still shook his hand showing respect. So since then, they've been kind of like friends and stuff. But they teamed up with the Usos because, yes, the Usos came back and Raw. So it's pretty quarterback. I mean, we haven't seen him for a long, long time. I think I don't know what, what injury happened to which one of them. I'm sorry you look alike and everything. But, um, yeah, they're back in action. And they fought against the New Day, all three of them, um, Sheamus and King Barrett. And as for King Barrett, always... I don't know, such a loser, such an unfortunate loser. He was the first one eliminated. And then as for the New Day, um, they threw Biggie out of the ring and he was like eliminated. And I guess I guess the New Day just chickened out or something. They they grabbed him and made the excuse that oh he's hurt. Oh we gotta take him, we gotta take him, oh my god, oh my god, we will you know, we'll be back, we'll be back. And they just take him in the back and they just left. And that's like that's like three guys, it's like the the whole team basically gone. So when Sheamus got up, Sheamus noticed that, oh fuck, I'm alone now. He was like, just him 
against the team of three. And yeah, I mean, he tried his best. I give him credit. They did try his best. He didn't run out like like Seth Rollins would have tried to run out, you know. But um, yeah, Sheamus was still defeated. He still he still lost. So yeah, you know. But um, yeah, it was an interesting match though. I wish they fought it out more, but I guess they wanted to make the New Day funny or chicken out or I don't know. So anyways, next big match was. Charlotte versus Paige. Of course, Charlotte is now the brand new champion, Divas champion, and Paige is insanely jealous and angry about it. And um, I do got to say a little note here, which is interesting during the promo, and it really stands out though. Um, during the promo, when they were doing the autograph signing and all that stuff, no, I mean the contract signing, which is also pretty interesting because there's never been, to my knowledge, a Divas championship contract signing. They, they always just gloss it over because, oh, it's a Divas, so who cares? You know? So. During this, Paige keeps accusing Charlotte that the only reason you're in the top because, oh, you know, because your daddy, because your daddy, because, you know, you're Ric Flair's daughter, whatever. And she said they were all fighters. You know, Ric Flair got to where he is. He's a fighter. Her brother's a fighter. And she's a fighter. And the thing is that um, in the real world, unfortunately, tragic, tragic thing, um, Ric Flair's son died of heroin overdose. So, of course, that was a, that was a very strong tragedy and everything. So, Paige just fights back with saying, well, we all know there wasn't much fight in your little brother, was there? So, of course, Charlotte explodes all over her and everything, and they fight out and all that stuff, but that was such a low blow, and everyone, we were, we were all like, ooh, dude, you don't, you don't say that, you don't joke about that, and apparently, Ric Flair did not know about, he was not in on this, when he saw it on TV, he was shocked, he was devastated, um, his ex-wife, the, the mother of, of the kid, you know, was very, like, surprised and said this was in bad taste. The only thing that's very noticeable is that every time we do the promos and do like the pay-per-view, like the whole storyline of, of why they hate each other, they always repeat like the most iconic phrases, the moments, the whatever, and notice that even though that was probably the lowest of the low, they didn't repeat that though. They didn't, they didn't um, mention Paige's comment and everyone kept saying like about she had some real personal comments but they didn't repeat them though so I guess he got the message that you don't you don't play with that but yeah so anyways it was a pretty good match pretty intense there was a lot of hatred there I mean Paige just is so fucking jealous of of, of Charlotte and Charlotte is just is just sick of her shit you know so they were really like all over each other they were really being the crap by each other they were trying to do they were trying to make submission moves to each other they were all doing all kinds of weird submission moves against each other trying to get the other one to tap out and everything so it was a pretty intense match there was a funny moment where Paige actually got on top of the um like the barricade with all the fans they got the pose you know this is my house and all that and it's pretty cool for all the fans I mean that's as, as close as you're gonna get to Paige like standing right in front of you you know without like a backstage patch or something back backstage pass or something so that was pretty cool but of course Charlotte took this chance to grab her and take her ass down and at the end Charlotte did get her in the figure eight nowhere to go Paige fought the most she could but she had to tap out and Charlotte is still the champion but of course now we got this thing where in Raw I guess when she did the figure eight or her hand or something just happened to be kind of sort of under the ropes so Paige is saying that that's cheating and you want a rematch so you know, see what happens there. And then for the next match after that, we have Tyler Breeze with now some array against Dolph Ziggler. And yes, it's kind of weird. It's just like a like a real life interfering with the storyline. We already know about um, Rusev and Lana breaking up, and that Lana's with Ziggler, and um, Rusev had. Uh, Summer Rae is a wannabe Lana and whatever, but the thing is that despite all this drama and all this junk in the real world, you know, the guy, I don't know his real name though, but Rusev and Lana are actually dating, they're in love, and they got engaged, and it wasn't like a secret, it was like out there on social media, Twitter, Tumblr, and all that stuff, so... With this being like out, like like on TMZ and all that stuff, and and on E or whatever, it's like you, you kind of can't ignore that now. You kind of can't say, yeah, they're engaged, but in wrestling they hate each other. They broke up. You know, you, you can't do that. So they were forced to just kind of sweep under the rug. 
um, Lana and Rusev announced their engagement. It just it was just random. Like I don't even know whatever. Now they kind of switched it around. So now it's like Ziggler's in love with uh, Summer Rae now, or he's calling back to her. I don't know. And um, Summer Rae said that well now she's got a new guy. She got Tyler Breeze, the new NXT guy, the new NXT pretty boy with the big old selfie stick and all that. And I gotta say, yeah, he's the usual. I don't know. He's like a big like combined with his. Like, arrogance, the whole Prince Pretty thing, and the selfie stick, and uh, the theme song all about him, and all that. It just reminds me of a cross between Shawn Michaels back in his younger Heartbreak Kid days, and uh, Rick the Model Martell. Like, both, like, the same kind of thing. And, and I'm sure that if that all that selfie stuff existed back in the 90s, I'm sure either Rick the Model or Shawn Michaels would have been doing the exact same thing, you know. But, yeah... You know, interesting match. Um, Tyler Breeze won against Ziggler. Not much to really say. For me, that was kind of like my version of the piss break because uh, I just didn't care too much. I'm sure that Tyler Breeze has a big following in NXT, but whatever. I just don't particularly care about him. I don't really particularly care about the feud between him and Ziggler anymore either. So, um, then we had, of course, one of the big things here was the Brothers of Destruction Kane and The Undertaker back together again against Bray Wyatt and whoever one of his guys that he chooses. So, so it's been supposed to be like a regular tag match. I'm going to get to that later too. i got to talk about that. But um, yeah, so basically before before Bray Wyatt could even choose who he wanted, Eric Rowan just, just I don't know, he just lost his shit. That was the most random. He just lost his shit. And just fucking ran to the ring, oh, like, like, like a monster. That was weird. So he got easily defeated. They bolted like a double choke slam on him and got him out. But I just like, what the fuck? He just, they were all just hanging there. And he just, oh, just runs there like a fucking savage monster. into the Like he just couldn't win the terrible part. Like I don't know why. What's the personal hatred of whatever? And he got eliminated so easily, you know? So then Bray Wyatt got there and he officially chose Luke Harper as his partner. Everyone's surprised because everyone was expecting the big man Strowman to be his guy. But Strowman still stayed outside though. Whenever the Undertaker or Kane would be thrown outside, he would take care of them, you know. So basically, you know, decent match. They fought it out and all that stuff. Um, they When they were both out... Both Undertaker and Kane did do a double choke slam on Strowman, slamming him right through the, the announcing table and everything. That was pretty epic. And then at the end, he did that thing where people love it now, where um, you know how the Undertaker is supposedly defeated, knocked out, and he just suddenly gets up like that. So now, like I guess with, with um, him and Kane, they both did, did, did like a double get up thing, shocking moment. They both choke slammed. Um, Bray Wyatt and um, Luke Harper, they got the good old Tombstone Pile Driver. I also want to say that's pretty cool to see Undertaker do the old-fashioned um, getting on top of the top rope, like walking on top of the top rope and jumping down and bashing you. That's pretty cool. Uh, every time I see that, now that he's older, it always amazes me. I, I, love, I love seeing him still able to walk the type rope like that, you know? But anyways, the Burst of Destruction won, they kicked ass, they walked off victorious, it was pretty good, it was a pretty decent match. I mean, I don't know, I guess it was just a decent match because the nostalgia is that feel-good, you know, moment of seeing them back together again. And of course, this is The Undertaker's 25th anniversary, he did appear as this random dead guy that appeared in the Survivor Series 25 years ago, so this is big anniversary, just like how um, Hell in the Cell was Kane's anniversary, so we had them back to back, so, you know, much love to The Undertaker, you're pretty awesome, I remember some real, real cool matches of you back in the day, so pretty awesome, I remember the one with you with Hulk Hogan and all that, but, you know, I don't want to go too much on that, but, you know, bottom line, Undertaker and Kane won, and now Bray Wyatt appears to be picking on the Dudleys for some reason on Raw, and now for the big one, Roman Reigns, against Dean Ambrose, and it was the whole thing that their friends, and this is one thing, that all my co-workers were predicting that one of them was going to turn bad. Either Roman Reigns was going to turn bad, or Dean Ambrose was going to turn bad. It's impossible to have a good guy versus a good guy without one of them turning out to be a douche or backstabbing or something, you know? But no, they fought it out. 
They gave it everything they had. They're smacking the crap out of each other. They're doing their super moves on each other and everything. But in the end, Roman Reigns did win. And despite, I have to admit that despite um, Ambrose being the more, you know, lunatic, he's the crazier one. Yeah, they still pat each other in the back. They still, they still showed mad respect for each other. So that was pretty cool. They fought it out. May the best man win. Okay, the best man won. Yeah, you know. So Roman Reigns is now the WWE, um, WWE Heavyweight Champion of the World. But then, um, you know, we got all the um, the graffiti, the graffiti, the confetti raining and everything, and it's all awesome and stuff. But um, Triple H comes out to shake his hand, congratulations. But of course, we all know Triple H is a douche. So Roman Reigns instead spears him. And everything, and everyone cheers and stuff. But then, all of a sudden, as Roman Reigns gets up from that, bro kick to the face. Sheamus out of nowhere, bro kicks him in the face. Sheamus, as you remember, Mr. Money in the Bank can cash it any time. Tries to cash it, cashes in the, the briefcase, tries to pin Roman Reigns down. Roman Reigns still manages to kick out of it. But unfortunately, despite him trying to stop him, another bro kick did him in. And that's it. Your new... Um, heavyweight champion of the world, Sheamus. So now Sheamus won, and of course Triple H is all douchey and smiling. The authority wins yet again, and they walk off and everything. And um, Roman Reigns just gets up and is just super shocked. And I gotta say, uh, for people that say, oh, wrestling's acting or whatever, I mean, I gotta say, he really looked shocked, heartbroken. He looked like he was trying so hard not to cry, and I just I just felt so bad for him. I mean, all year, since the Royal Rumble and everything, every time he gets close to the title, he always loses it or has to fight against it or has to do some new obstacle to get it. And now he had the fucking belt in his hand. He was champion for all of, like, three minutes or something, and then fucking Sheamus takes it, and I mean, that just pissed me off, and I know it's wrestling and blah, 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 but that just pissed me off, I saw that, I was like, oh, come on, I just felt like I was really pissed about it, and just seeing how Reigns was like, I mean, he looked hurt, man, the lip was quivering, like I said, he looked like, like, like a big, tough macho man trying hard not to cry, because... I mean, dude, he had the belt in his fucking hand. He was, like, admiring it. And then, you know, this shit happened. So, I guess now we got to put up with Sheamus being the champion. And I guess, I mean, there'll be a rematch between him and Roman Reigns. We'll see how that goes or whatever. But, I mean, guys, just give him his due. Now, back in the Royal Rumble, beginning of the year, people were saying that maybe the world wasn't ready to like him yet as a new guy. He was still kind of unknown or whatever. But now, like, I mean, he had a whole year. People love him. He's, I mean, he's awesome and everything. I mean, I became a big fan of him now, and, and it just sucks that they did this to him and everything. So, so yeah. So, anyways, bottom line, the the matches were, I mean, I did like the, the semifinal matches. Um, I did like the, the Page versus Charlotte match. That was pretty intense. But everything else was kind of so-so. Um, another thing is that people also felt... I didn't notice. I was kind of into it. But it, I did I did agree, though. The Roman Reigns versus Ambrose fight when they were against her. It was so short, though. It was pretty quick. I honestly missed what exactly happened that made Reigns win. I think I guess he speared him, too. I don't know. It, it was just so fast. It didn't really seem as, fa as long as it should have been. And it looked like it was cut short on purpose just to make more time for, like, the celebration and Sheamus coming in and all that junk. Like, I don't know. But, um, what I do gotta say, like I said before, my main rant is that the Survivor Series was just an afterthought in an event that's called the Survivor Series. And that's, that's, that's just dumb. I mean, why? And, and it just feels so weird. It just feels so weird because most of this stuff happened... Because of Roman, uh, because of Seth Rollins, but there was no indication of anything before this started. There was no um, Survivor Series match announced. Like for example, last year, that's the thing. Last year, that was the main event. The stakes were very high. It was like Team Cena versus Team Authority. If the Authority loses, they're gone. It came back anyway. But for the time being, they were gone. And in Cena's case, if Cena loses. He keeps his job, but all his teammates lose their jobs. They got fired. They came back anyway. But it was still like, it was such a high thing. And of course, ending with 
with Sting suddenly appearing. It was like it was like a big thing. And as the weeks kept going, they were like doing teams. Cena was desperately looking for teammates. Um, the teammates got either bribed or injured. Sheamus was with them actually, but he got injured. So it was like, oh no, we're missing a teammate. Like they made such a big focus on that. And here, weeks away. No mention of any match at all. No mention of who's going to be in the team or anything. Um, that the perfect chance of the Undertaker and Kane to battle with the, the Wyatt people. It's like the Wyatts were already four. They already have uh, Wyatt, Strowman, Rowan, and Luke Harper. Now that's four. I mean, they could have had Undertaker and Kane grab two other guys. I really don't know who though. But that would have been on four on four Survivor Series right there. And that would have been the main event because... Before the Rollins incident, the the whole big thing was the, the burst of destruction against the Whites, and that would have been the, the main event, at least that's what I thought. But then they started announcing, like, oh no, this is going to be a regular tag match. Kane and Undertaker against Wyatt and whoever he chooses. And I was like, what the fuck? And weeks, like a week or so before, and nothing is announced yet. And even I'm thinking, so are we going to have a Survivor Series without a Survivor Series? I mean, that was just dumb. And then, like, and then when they do do it, it's just randomly going to go together. It's just, it just randomly, they just pick names out of a hat. No, no, no stakes, no nothing. It was just, it was just disappointing. It's, it's like you were watching Royal Rumble and... The Royal Rumble is like in the beginning of the match or something. It's still being the main event. And it's just random guys. No stakes. Who cares who wins? Normally it's supposed to be whoever wins becomes the next guy to fight a champion. No. Just for fun or something. Or maybe a steel cage match. And the steel cage match lasts like two minutes. But the whole pay-per-view is about Cena versus The Rock or something. You know like, like you, don't, you just don't do that. And that's my biggest complaint on this pay-per-view. It's supposed to be the Survivor Series. And it was barely an issue. It was a non-issue. The whole thing was more about Ambrose versus Reigns because we all knew that was coming anyway. And the Undertaker, you know, Kane versus the Wyatts. And I mean, other things about Undertaker. This was like, you know, it's 25 year anniversary. But as, that's another reason why I felt that they should have had Team Undertaker versus Team Wyatt, and they just fucked that up so badly. They, they really fucked up a perfect chance there. And there, there were no matches announced. When Rollins got hurt, they did this tournament. But what other matches were announced? There was nothing announced besides the Undertaker stuff and Charlotte versus Paige. The Tyler Breeze versus Ziggler came later. There were no other matches announced. Like we have a whole lineup of matches, and oh, we gotta you know cancel some or or move some to the side or cut them short because now there's a tournament. I mean, it was just the weirdest pay per view ever. It's like if Rollins got hurt like very conveniently like 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 they had no idea at all what they were going to do for your pay-per-view but hey he got hurt let's do a tournament we'll fill up the air time with that so that was like i mean i could just go on and on and on but it was just so weird i have never seen this before ever it's just so weird i mean look at the pay-per-view now if you watch um the tlc I bet you there are going to be all these matches being announced as the weeks go on. It's not going to be just like one match or two matches and all of a sudden they're going to throw another tournament that will conveniently fill in the airtime. I just, I don't know. And again, tables, tables, ladders, tables, chairs, and ladders, whatever the, the TLC stands for. Can you imagine if the whole pay-per-view, there was only one match with tables, ladders, and chairs, and that's it? But who cares about that match because... The main deal is like, I don't know, the return of Daniel Bryan or something. Like, like I mean, you just don't do that. You just don't do that. I mean, I don't know. Like I said, I can go on and on and on and on. But, but that's my major complaint. That this pay-per-view, it was just random. It was just, I don't know. I just like, like I said, I just like the Rain stuff. I like the Undertaker stuff. I like Sharp versus Page. Everything else was just weird. Some of the, you know rushed and everything and like I said the Survivor Series was kind of like oh yeah let's um just throw that in there because that's the title of the thing let's just throw it in there to get it over with okay it's done now okay back to our back to what we care about the tournament you know I don't know so anyways guys um what do you think of the pay-per-view did you like it did you hate it what are your thoughts leave your comments below and um yeah, see you all next time. We got one review to wrap up the year. TLC. Let's see what happens. Well, Roman Reigns 
defeat Sheamus and be champion? I guess we'll find out. See y'all next time.